<clears throat> this is Jeremiah. We're back with Hans Good, part two. And Good is number six on my list. And by the way, there is no hierarchy here. I, I think I like Peter the most out of every painter I've ever seen. Uh, I like Isaac, number two, maybe. I think Shishkin might be number three. Richard's four, Percy five, and now we're on six, which is Mr. Hans, who is very good uh, at painting, and uh, just a wonderful painter. We're looking at this, and I'm looking at the background, focusing on the background the most here. I, I, the water is done in original fashion here with that clear green look. And a little blue in there, as you might see. And, of course, we have um, the background here. And, uh, and let's get some scripture out. Let's go with uh, something, uh, let's go with, um, all doubt is sin. The reason why doubt is sin is because nobody ever doubted anything until the devil and Adam and Eve sinned. In heaven, there was, everything was amen because no one lied. In heaven, everything is amen all the time because no one can lie. No one can cheat, no one can steal. No one can destroy anything. Right? No, no, you can't destroy anything. So everything is always yes and amen. It's always true. Yes, that's true. Yes. And, and that's what makes these paintings wonderful is that, is that it is impossible for God to lie. And when you look at nature and, and you put some scriptures with them and you have... A Christian fellowship, which you're going to have in eternity, in Koinonia. You're you're looking at these paintings, and you're you're satisfied with beauty. You don't walk past the roses; you see them and you smell them. This is what Christianity does. This is what's going to happen to you in heaven. You're going to be a new creature, whereby that you don't miss anything anymore. The world goes by everything. And they, and they don't experience anything. It's like going to a circus and you thought that you experienced the world. The circus is not the world. You don't need fantastic things. You don't need uh, you know, a, a merry-go-round. You don't need a circus. You've never needed a circus. Americans digest tons and tons of horror movies every night. And there's a chance, the chances are they're going to hell because God hates violence. So, so America is going to hell because they're enjoying a circus of violence. You'll notice that the pictures I choose here and the gentlemen that I choose, they're obviously nice people. They're very happy with God's creation. Most of these guys are Christians. I don't know what their status is. But most of these guys are Christians. One's named Peter, one's named Isaac. Okay, they must have something to do with the Bible. Well, there's your evidence right there. I think I only saw one painting from Mr. Good here that was questionable. Other than that, he's on task. He's looking at beauty, he's G-rated, and that's what we do here. Let's move on to some more scriptures as we go to our sixth gentleman here, which is Mr. Good, who is very good. And this will be my last segment for today, okay? Another 30 minute or so segment looking at this wonderful painter, Mr. Hans Good, and he is very good. Now, this reminds you of his other paintings that we've looked at earlier, whereby that he is very, very good with ships, obviously. And he's giving you a lot of. Impressionism here. Uh, he doesn't want to give lots of detail, and that's what he wants to give you here. And it's I, I think it's a very good job here. I think that uh, uh, um, it's a wonderful painting. And let's 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 find a scripture for this one. Let's go to. Um, and by the way, we will be enumerating all of these later. We just looked at every encounter is amen. That's very significant for you because there's no crying in heaven. There's no pain. You can't cry in heaven. It's impossible. There is no pain in heaven. Everything that was introduced by Adam and Eve's sin and the devil is gone. 
And one of the favorite scriptures of this of this ministry is Ecclesiastes 3.11. He makes everything beautiful in his time. These paintings here of everything being beautiful and in order, that's what you're going to experience permanently without any interruption ever again. That's why it's called a blessed hope. If I have a hope of being healing, of being healed, that's good. Nothing wrong with that. But your blessed hope is being permanently with the Lord. That's your blessed hope. Which means we have different things that we're confident in as Christians. It's called faithing. The word is pistis. But, but the thing that we really enjoy thinking about and anticipating is being in a Hans Gude painting permanently without anybody from hell. Let's talk about dunamis for a moment. The word dunamis in Greek, it means power. There are different words for dunamis. There's dunamai, there's dunameo, there's all different kinds of dunamis. But the main idea is, is that you have power from on high. And that power is for you to get going and to be productive. In love, service, productivity, okay? I like this painting a lot. This is a sweetie for me. I, let's move on, though. Now, we did have these paintings in less less uh, pixels here, but this is a nice one here. We're going to skip this one, take a quick look at this one. This is a nice one. Obviously, he's, he's really sharing his, uh, his Impressionist abilities here. Uh, he is not ignorant of Impressionist work here at all, is he? No, no, he, he has a... Um, and I like the way the water reflects here. I like, I like what he did with the water there, but we're going to move on. Um, yeah, I really think that water... Uh, let's take another look at this before we get rid of it. Yeah, I, I like what he did with the water here. He's got a little Monet going on here, and of course, we're just rejoicing in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's move on. As this is a nice one here. This is a nice impressionist painting here. Uh, this reminds me of Monet. Monet could have painted like this gentleman. He just didn't want to. And uh, every now and then, we'll, we'll look at Monet later on. That was my sister Claudine. That was Esther's favorite painter. She named her daughter Destiny Monet. Let's take a look at our next painting. Here's another kind of Wonderful painting here from Mr. Hans Good, and we'll leave it at this here. This is uh, nicely done. It's a short snapshot look, and uh, obviously we have some corona kinds of winds, a storm coming or something here. A lot of wind, and of course we have some uh, a lady and a child here that are, are dangerously placed here. They must really be careful there. And, of course, there's some sort of relative out there who is getting some fishing in during the storm, evidently, or traveling. Let's let this one go. A very nice picture, painting, rather. Let's look at some scripture or something. Uh, Come unto me, um, all you who are burdened and heavy laden. Go to the River Jordan and let it happen. Come, let us reason now. Some of you out there need to reason and think. You know, scientifically, uh, you know, uh, come let us reason. Another way of looking at that is, from an American perspective, is come let us be scientific. Are you a sinner and, and do you belong in jail? And that's the key. And the storm is coming here, as the Master has referred to, is the same one that comes to every human when they do not receive Jesus Christ with an opportunity to do so. And the storm is going to come to you and it's going to be hellacious because you're going to be assessed on your behavior as opposed to having Jesus Christ as your lawyer. You're going to have to face the judge on your own, and that's called bad idea. You want to have Jesus Christ, the advocate, there for you. And that's why we teach repentance and baptism. Come unto Jesus Christ, you, all of you out there who haven't done so. 
And you who have, we, we, we encourage you to stay on the narrow brick road. And we encourage you, as we mentioned earlier from Jude, remain in the love of God. Let's go to our next painting here. This is a nice one, and it has that storm, which is a good reference for Jesus Christ, the Master, referring to the storm that's coming to the people. And the storm is coming, and he's telling them that you're not paying attention to the real storm coming. You're telling me that you're very, very intelligent because you know when a storm is coming. And I'm telling you that that ain't the case. Wisdom is getting ready for your judgment day. That's what wisdom is. Let's take a look at this painting. This is one of my favorites. Uh, I rate this one very high. Um, uh, it's just a, a very moving. I like the way he did the water there. Um, nobody does water like every... Uh, all of these master guys here, they do water differently. And I would have to say that the, the, the water job here is one of the, my best of all time. Um, um, the blurry uh, ridge there, the boat is well done. Um, he seems to always have a woman waiting on shore um, as though he did some fishing himself or his family, his family of fishermen. But uh, a very good job on the boat. And I would have to say that the land there is done very well, the green. A beautiful job. And, of course, he's giving you more of an impressionist cloud cover here, not uh, realism. And, of course... Um, the water there is what is what uh, is what's really doing a job for me here. Uh, I I really like the water and how it's tied in with that ridge there. What a wonderful job! Uh, and let's look at some scripture here. Let's look at what forgiveness means and what is the only place for forgiveness. Um, the Lord said to Joshua, "Have I not commanded you?" All humans are commanded. It's, it's not a, an elective in high school. You have to take this course. And, and you are commanded to repent and be baptized and obey the gospel uh, when the opportunity is there. And the worst thing you can do is reject that opportunity. That's just horrible. Um, and uh, we're going to go back to Jordan again a little and talk about um, the rejection of the gospel as an evangelical moment here. And I want to talk about forgiveness and how forgiveness is applied, as the Bible says, through self-humiliation. And that is, come unto me, put my yoke upon you. We just looked at that scripture. And it's also tied with anything dealing with self-humiliation, repentance and baptism, and, of course, compliance to serving the Lord Jesus Christ and putting on a servant mind, this becomes living bread. I just explained to you or gave you the details of what living bread is. That's exactly what living bread is. The scriptures I'm giving you, if you eat them, think about them, talk about them, write them down, then you have eaten living bread and you shall never see death. Though you were dead, yet shall you live. That's the scripture from the Master. We're going to get into some of those more specific later on. As many of you know, we focus a lot on the red letters here. Uh, I've been getting into the book of Psalms, some of my favorite scriptures. We just went through Psalm 1 through 9. We just went through Paul the Apostle and getting into some of the major scriptures that I like to quote, dealing with basics of Christianity and sound doctrine, especially living bread. And we've been through that. And I'm very happy to have those online here for anyone who wants them. And uh, just click them on. Now, they will be put into categories. Sometimes the categories get a little sloppy, but we're going to fix that up as time goes on. If you go to 15 in this ministry, you'll get lots of science here. I'll give you some science pertaining to what the word science means uh, pertaining to heaven and earth. Science is also applicable to physical science, or rather, a political science. They used to call it political science here in the USA, and other sciences. It's not just... Uh, uh, matter. A lot of people use the word science for only factual and things that are evidence in matter. That, that's not what the word means. The word originally meant to acknowledge well. As the psalmist said, I know right well. Okay? We already had a word for science, which means to acknowledge. That's what it means. 
Let's move on. This is this one of my favorite paintings here. Uh, the boat here to the left is done very well. There, I like the color there. Um, uh, he's giving you that impressionist grass, uh, but uh, but it's just a wonderful job here. And we move on. Let's take a look at this in big view and small view here. We, we have different options here. Um, this is a nice one here. Um, this is one of my favorites of Good here. Let's take a look at this and get some scriptures out. We bounce around scriptures here. And I'm having a wonderful time doing that. I really like bouncing around a lot. I, I guess it's my dad liked to do that a lot. My earth father. Now, let's look at this here. Now, this is another one of these monsters here from the sky. It's, it's getting dark, obviously. There's a storm, or uh, I don't know. It, it appears to be the evening here, but um, they've been obviously fishing all day. The, net, the nets are on the rack there. And uh, um, he, he, the emphasis here is the sky. And a nice original style he has here with the sky. Um, he's giving you foreground, midground, and background here, and it's nicely done. Now you can see the canvas a little here. This painting was damaged, evidently, um, uh, in transit or something. It probably looked a lot better than it did, but uh, even with the damage of this canvas, um, you're looking at a, a masterpiece here, in my opinion. The, the way the clouds are done, it's a, He's giving you a little bit of a of a cartoonish thing here, and I really liked it a lot. Let's find some scripture ideas here. Let's look at um, um Those are some Hebrew words. Let's let those go. I have to put those definitions down. There's more work for me. A workman handling accurately the word of truth, rightly dividing. Let's talk about fleecing the flock here. The sunset is coming down on breaking the tenth commandment and not loving your neighbor, the second commandment. You, the, 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 the clouds are coming. And all the people who fleece the flock, who are hoarding the offerings as Pharisees and TV preachers and so forth, their days are numbered. And they're going to wish that they were sharing people, and they're going to wish that they lived in a impoverished or a, a semi-impoverished state. For, for it's, it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. The rich man can hardly enter the kingdom of God. Because you're breaking the 10th commandment and you're not loving your neighbor. And you can't break those commandments and enter into the narrow gate. For narrow is the gate. Wide is the way that leads to destruction. A lot of people I see on TV and elsewhere, they're walking on Broadway. Some of them are saying they're on the narrow path and they're liars. Because you can't hoard money and covet and uh, get in the narrow gate. You're not saved. Uh, Jesus said the rich man basically woke up in flames. He woke up in flames. Why? Because he was breaking the tenth commandment. Some people think that the commandments are null nullified or something. That's utter nonsense. Just because Paul in introduced a lot of grace scriptures and no man is justified by the works of the law doesn't mean that we throw the law away. That, that's, and a lot of people believe that and a lot of Americans do historically, and it's mental retardation, and it could cost them their soul. Because you can't be on Broadway and get in the narrow gate. And one of the ways of being on Broadway is hoarding. And, 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 and the skies are darkening for these people, and they're, they're in trouble. Uh, the Word of God is not, uh, does not come back void. God's commandments are sure. Uh, 
And it's very sad to see a lot of people who are buying into this and they're being seduced and obviously they are, uh, um, they're being bamboozled, you know, they're, they're going to lose their soul. The young rich ruler was told that he was going to lose his soul because he was hoarding. He was rich. He wanted to repent and join the boys, but he was told that he would have to give everything away and hang around the poor people here. Hang out with the poor and be poor in order for him to get into the narrow gate. This is huge in your Bible. And it's also huge in America because politicians, some of them very famous at this time, they're trying to add being rich to Christianity. And it's utter nonsense. That's not going to work. Has not God chosen the poor who are rich in faith, the book of James? You need to be rich in confidence in God, not in your bank account. You're, you're, you're toast. You Basically, you can't go above middle class as a Christian, according to your Bible. I, I'm not going to teach that right now, but if you go above lower middle class, you're in trouble. You better watch out. You better not cry. I'm telling you why. This is our last Goo. Goo doesn't have that many paintings. We'll take a peek at some of his earlier ones that are really nice and, and wrap him up. Um, let's talk about a heretic for a moment. The Bible talks about heretics. Heretics are people who have an elastic stand. They don't have a backbone. And they don't want to go to the commandments of Jesus Christ. They want to twist everything, hide everything, malign everything. And, and, and when they meet the Lord, they're going to find out that, that they should have listened to sound doctrine teaching, liquidated their cash, um, uh, spent time with church duties, Bible study, um, instead of counting money like the Grinch and, and, and the uh, uh, Scrooge for Christmas time. we might call Christ Mass. I don't know what the word Mass means. I, I got a feeling it's something bad. We'll let that go. You're, we're, you're in Babylon now. You're, you're not in a safe place. You have to screen everything in, in America. You better screen everything. And let, let me make a note on that. Uh, instead, of, instead of giving you a scripture, let me talk to some of you young people out there. Uh, I had a, a young man come to me in my office, Ford Aerospace. I had an office in Newport Beach. And... And I worked there as a, um, a uh, deburr hand, and we did some identification, and we used a few intra mics and a few OD mics and a few profilometers and things like that. We, I did not do CNC work, but I did have to do some a little slightly technical work, very few blueprints. But um, a gentleman came to my office one day. He was young, obviously um, one of the uh, one of the uh, executive's children. Because he wasn't doing anything, and he was too well-dressed uh, for average Joe. So he fit the profile of a, a rich man in the office, one of the, one of the children. He came and he said, you know, Jeremiah, you're known for being a wise guy around here. They say that you're very knowledgeable, and you know wisdom. And I said, well, I know a little, but uh, there's only one teacher. That's Jesus, basically. And what he, the question he asked was something I wanted to bring up to some of you young people out there. Is he thought that... that Making a future that didn't have restrictions was something that other people got away with, and he wants to do that. He wants to really enjoy life, and he wants to enjoy it to the fullest, but he still wants to be safe, kind of. And I told him, I said, there is no such animal. It's always best to err on the side of caution. That goes with your friends and everybody. You're better off telling somebody that you can't go to the to the to the party tonight uh, than enjoying the party um, for the most part. You're better off staying home, staying with your parents, helping your family, and so forth. And, and, and I used to have guys come over to my house, and I used to ask them, or I, I I don't remember necessarily asking them, but 
wanting to ask them, why aren't you home helping your mother? You're over here all the time. You're not doing your homework, that's obvious, and you're not helping your parents, obvious, and you're a clown, basically. And they were nice guys. I'm not putting them down, I'm just saying that they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to be library, disciplined people. And your fun time has to be a time where it's part-time. Fun time is okay, but it can't be full-time. Some of these guys, their children were murdered. Some of them were got into drugs. Some of them, a lot of horrible things happened. And, and what I told the young man was, was that wisdom is something that's very simple when you look at it from a distance. And that is, is that you as a young person, you should get up early in the morning, go to bed early, and let, and let the world basically go by. Go to church. When people want to meet you, tell them to meet you at church. After they've met you at church over a period of time and you've screened them, then you let them into your world. That's very simple mathematics and logic. I don't need a Bible necessarily to understand that. But I just told you then mathematically it's more logical for you to use your brain and to cut down on fellowship with people who are not going to benefit you. Now, some people will say that you're being too restrictive and there's no such thing as a perfect friend, but that's not the point. The point is God gave you a brain and he said, love me with all of your mind. And, and that's what we do here in this ministry. We love the Lord our God with our mind. And the young man just left my office. I could stop work because my boss let me do anything I wanted to do. I had a very good boss. He knew I was productive and he never bothered me. He also liked jazz rock, which I like jazz rock too. But he liked fusion jazz of the, of the late 70s and so forth, early 80s. But let, let's move on. So I wanted to use this as a rock here. The rock here is Jesus Christ. And, 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 when, you, and when you use your head, you're going to be solid. You're not going to be flippant. You're not going to get into drugs, some of you young people. You're not going to get into alcohol. You don't need alcohol for squat. And you have friends who drink, take drugs in school, dump them and tell them, meet me at church. And that's one of my favorite things to share with young people in this ministry, as we're going to shut down now, is you need the rock of wisdom. You, you need to use your head. You don't want to be on the Jerry Springer show. You don't have to go on that show. You, you can take your time, go to church, meet a nice person, and get married and avoid a lot of problems. There are some people who just turned up missing in Jamaica. They went to a bar one night, and they, no one has seen them. If they would have got on the narrow brick road of, of, of a Mennonite person here in town, a Mennonite who goes to bed early, the women dress properly, and, and they go to bed, and they have Bible study, and they work and go to bed. Those people will be alive today, probably. So I'm done giving my lecture to you young people. And some of you may say, I don't want to, don't preach to me. Well, listen, uh, they have a song that was famous in America where, uh, where a lot of people in Hollywood said, uh, what's the name of that song? Don't preach to me. And I remember that in a movie I watched when I was uh, some time back, and the lady came out on the stage and goes, don't preach to me, daddy, don't preach to me. Well, listen, listen, nobody's making you listen to anything, young lady. It was a young lady. And, and, okay, you don't have to take advice. I, I don't push Bible study on anybody. Solomon and wisdom, it, it, he who has an ear, let him hear, let her hear. And evidently the lady, the lady was saying that she didn't want to hear any, any teachings of discipline uh, in her personal life and just go, you know. Well, that, that's a very dangerous road to take. And obviously, we as general Christian people, we hope that they find forgiveness and that they get their act together and they don't stay in the street and get hurt. That's my point.
Okay, that's it. Another 30-minute segment. Uh, this is another wonderful painting from Hans Gude. I like that rock there. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. The rock is the same thing as the narrow path. Every now and then I will isolate you young people out there and, and, and let you know that, that, that life can be very exciting uh, without any drugs, any alcohol, any fornication at all. You, you can join a, a youth ministry and help the elderly, and that can be your joy. And you'll find that that is the richest joy available. Is koinonia in the Greek. Christian love on love, which John spends most of his time on in his letters, correct? Beloved, let us love one another. I, I don't have a new commandment to teach unto you that you don't already know that we are to love one another, and you do that with boots-on-the-ground activity. You can pray for people, you can help them uh, in, in various ways. The Master delineates what that love is that John talks about, brotherly love. That's the key image in the history of the United States, brotherly love. Philadelphia, that's what the Greek word means. So obviously, uh, Mr. Quaker uh, is heavy on brotherly love, and that's cool. Mr. Mr. William Penn, uh, who comes to the United States and uh, starts a colony in Pennsylvania, which means Penn's trees. I think that Sylvania means trees. I forgot, but... Uh, he, he, Pennsylvania must be a very beautiful place with trees. I've never been there. I can go there. It's not that far from here. Some of you may think that we're, we're pushing against brotherly love because we're going to be very strict about who we pick as friends. That's called nonsense. Whoever told you that is probably from the devil. Discipline for you young people, take helping your parents and staying home and using your head is what this ministry is about. I, I've taught hundreds of students in America from K through 12. Primarily K through 6th grade. 5th grade. And I instilled in them and implanted in them a fostering of discipline. That you taking care of your parents, helping your parents, staying home, using your head, uh, working hard on school, even if it's at your schoolwork, even if you're not doing well, you don't quit. You just keep going. No, we don't have quitters around here. We know that people want to quit. It's it, it's human nature to want to quit. But I told I told my students, some of them having problems in special ed, I told them that that we don't have quit around here. We don't know what the word means. There are no special ed students. Everybody's special ed. The only person that's not special ed is Jesus Christ. Everybody else is special ed. Some of you may be having problems in school right now because I reach some young people. Young people. Most of this audience is elderly audience. There is no more middle class anymore in America. Everyone from age uh, 16 to, to, to 70 is, is, is out there in the world now. It's, it's, America's turned into a very bad place. But my point is that some of you are young. I'm done for the day. I wanted to remind you that you can be a very disciplined person and still enjoy your life. You don't have to be a party person to enjoy the world. You can sit here and look at Good and relax and look at his painting strokes and look at how he's different than other people. He, he reminds me a lot of uh, another Hans or something. You know, we, we can bounce around here. His paintings look a lot like some of the other painters. We're going to look at um, Brenda Kills. No, not Brenda Kills. We're going to look at um, Hazelton here uh, shortly. Hazelton is another wonderful painter. 
I think he learned from this guy. I don't know, but uh, we're, we're going to talk about pain a little bit. And look at this beauty of these guys and these rocks. and This, this is God's creation, and we're looking at it from a wonderful perspective. And we're looking at a place on this earth that no one else has been or will go but you. And that's what well, being an art fan is. It's appreciating a picture that God created that you are enjoying. And then you add scripture to this and you speak scripture and then you are enjoying what you should be enjoying. G-rated entertainment. That's what we push here. Bible study and G-rated entertainment. I have tons of black and white movies. Most of them are docudramas. I just looked at what's his name, who, uh, I forgot his name, who got his legs uh, taken off, and he became, with no legs, probably the most important pi uh, uh, pilot in the history of World War One, World War Two, with no legs. He had prosthetic legs. He insisted on flying. He, he, he initiated an organization in the sky there, a, a, a flight plan that was superior to the Germans, and he wiped out those dirty rats who were bombing innocent people in London, minding their own business. I like movies with heroes like that. He could have been, he could have been disabled, stayed home, and ate ice cream. But he put, he put legs on, prosthetics, that were obviously painful, and he got, into the, got in the plane, and he manned up, and he basically saved thousands and thousands of people's lives. That's a hero. We're not worshiping him. We're just thankful that there are people who are brave and who are willing to uh, uh, go into difficult places for the benefit of other people. That's essentially what Christianity is. You're willing to lay down your life for the brethren. John and Paul said that that is the love of Jesus Christ, is laying down your life for the brethren. That's living bread. If you eat this bread, you'll never see death. Take up your cross and follow me. If any man taketh not his cross, is not worthy of me. Jesus does not want manby-pamby people, and I don't want them either. A police officer just came over here. He's willing to die for my car stereo. That's what I call a man. The master is saying, you're not worthy of him if you're not a real man. And to put it in American terminology... If you come over to my house and you destroy my house and you're lazy, you're not worthy of me because I am a disciplined person. I care about people and you don't. So you need to hit the, hit the road, dude. That's all this is over and over and over again. At the risk of sounding redundant, that's what Christianity really is. If any man taketh not his cross up, People who don't really care about you, they're not worthy of you. They're not worth your time. Why, why recruit them? Why bring them? Do you think God's going to bring TV preachers to heaven Well, all they think about is staring in the mirror and counting money like Scrooge? They, they, they're not going into heaven. They're not worthy of heaven because they don't love people. That's why. We're shutting down. That's it for the day. Jeremiah's done. Um, we're rejoicing together with you in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number 32 in this ministry is, is, is the potter's wheel. God's going to develop you. He's going to make you shine. He's going to uh, build character in you as you become patient. In your patience, do you own your soul? That's it for today. We bounced around. I've enjoyed bouncing around. This is the kind of Bible study that my dad, Earth Father, used to like to do. He liked the, the open apostolic format. Now, as you know, we have a, a, a playlist here that we, we stick to. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll mention some scriptures, but we'll usually mention what category they're in 
and and clarify where we are. That's what I do here more and more. You'll see that more and more as we get into 2024, okay? A little more discipline here, and, and where are we, and a little more Greek, and uh, we just looked at the word dunamis, which means power. We get the word dynamite from there. There's different kinds of dynamite. There's dynamite that comes from heaven, that's exousia. There's dynamite that's stored. There's dynamite that develops. There's dynamite that's in, in waiting. There's all different kinds of power. But let's, let's wrap it up for the day. Jeremiah is done. As we continue to constantly listen for the horn of the rapture so that you can get out of here. You can say goodbye to all of this evil. Paul said we groan. I'm going to probably have a nice sandwich here later uh, in a few minutes uh, for dinner. I'm going to enjoy the sandwich, but that's not my joy. That's not my chief crown of rejoicing. My chief crown of rejoicing is no more suffering, no more hospitals, no more car accidents. No more uh, pain ever. No more in heaven. That's our chief crown of thinking. In the presence of the Lord. There you are. Sitting there, squatting in the presence of the Lord. Relaxing around Mr. Morning Star. Not all stars belong to the sky. Some are you who preach righteousness, who preach forgiveness. We look at that term today. That's the remission of sins. Jeremiah's done. You get my popcorn here as we, and uh, that's it for today. So you have a wonderful, whatever you're doing there, wherever you are, and we are going to shut down. As we say amen to all of this, and we say hallelujahs, lifting up our hands, for God inhabits the praises of his people, and we're going to praise him so we can have that wonderful habitation of Father's presence. Amen? Okay, that's it. Shalom. As we, we just kind of look, this guy is one of my favorites. You, uh, you can like other people. I can't go over everybody. <laughs> Let me say one more thing. We, we can't look at every painter. There, there are so many wonderful painters. I, I, I left out some of my favorite impressionist watercolor painters. I don't have time. Some of them are from San Diego, California, a beautiful place. Uh, when God made a place, he made San Diego, uh, that's God's country. San Diego, California is amazing. Let us, let's let things go. That's it. We can't go over every artist. We'll look at some beautiful paintings. We'll go a few places and shut down. We're going to speed up as we go along, by the way. One more quick note. We're going to speed up as we go along. We're going to have more scriptures. And we're going to have more paintings because we're going to get past my favorite guys here. This guy's one of my favorites, so we're taking more time on him. The first, oh, I would say 20 painters that we're going to go through here this year, um, those are my main boys. As we get along, we're going to take a quick look. Okay? Um, uh, these guys are some of my favorite guys. I like, to, I like to look at their paintings. I like to look at how they interpret God's creation. They're, they're, they're considered master painters, but that's all an opinion. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, right? Shalom.